Hey guys, so I'm sure everyone has heard the news by now that Jujutsu Kaisen is ending in literally a few chapters. Now, I'm sure for many of you and of course your tribal chief as well, this is a massive shock and I can't believe Gege is actually ending the story so soon. Now, on the one hand, I made so many disclaimers in my videos emphasizing that Jujutsu Kaisen will be ending soon. However, I didn't realize it was going to be within a few chapters, but hey, here we are. And I have to say, as someone who has been making content for this series, for it to just end so soon, I can't lie, it's a major disappointment. Jujutsu Kaisen is still a monster of a series and in 2023, he ended up as number two ahead of One Piece in overall manga sales, so clearly it's not for money reasons because the series is still a moneymaker. Gege Akutami did mention that his reasoning for cancelling the show has nothing to do with the editors, so this decision of ending the manga so soon is down to him. But for me, I'm still raw with this news. I still can't believe the series is ending so soon. And it looks like the Yuji vs Sukuna fight is going to be the main finale fight of this series. And don't get me wrong, I think these two should have the finale fight because of their history with one another. But wouldn't it have been nice if we got the same grandiose build-up before the Gojo vs Sukuna fight for the Yuji vs Sukuna fight? I'm not an expert in storytelling, but Gege's story is out there for us consumers to buy and critique, which is what us fans are allowed to do. And personally for me, I think Gege should have let Sukuna take a break from fighting. Yes, I know we got chapter 265 where it seemed like Yuji and Sukuna were going to have a heart to heart, but that chapter Gege added, in my opinion, for that break in between the fighting. But in your tribal chief's opinion, it's not enough. There should have been a bigger break in the fighting, at least a good 15 to 20 chapters of a break. Sukuna has already defeated and killed a lot of characters already, so him taking down the majority of the Jujutsu sorcerers and then having a break before the final main event finale fight between himself and Yuji will feel like a big deal. It will have that same level of stakes as if the fight was between Gojo and Sukuna. And to be fair, I would argue that it's even bigger because there's literally no one else left if Sukuna wins. There's then that's it. Sukuna and the Cursed Spirits will rule the world. I could then see it in that same scenario as the Planet of the Ape movies, where in the future, after Caesar's time, there's barely any humans left. All advanced technology, clothes, property, jobs, everything belong to the apes. I could see a similar future for the world of Jujutsu Kaisen if Sukuna were to win in the end. So that's why it's bigger stakes, because there is no more backup plan for Yuji anymore. If he loses, there's no one else left. However, before the Gojo fight, Yes, it did feel the world is doomed if Gojo lost, but we still had all the Jujutsu sorcerers that had survived the culling games all alive and present to fight off against Sukuna if Gojo were to lose. So there was always that backup plan and it did come into fruition when Gojo did actually lose. So my main point is, for this big finale fight, let's have a proper WrestleMania event type of build for this fight rather than just having Yuji and Sukuna having a heart to heart. I think for me personally, I still have so many questions that I want to be answered before the story ends. Like, why does Kenjaku want to fuse Master Tengen with the people of Japan? Why does he want to create Monster Tengen? Has he been reincarnating all this time just to do that? Is Kenjaku just a cold-blooded killer? How did he become the way that he is? Same goes for Sukura. How did he learn to become the strongest sorcerer in the world? In Shaman King, we learned that how Asakura learned and mastered all five elements and has even written a book, the Ultra Senji Ryaketsu, which then, in the present timeline, allowed Yo to learn about his powers and develop his own level of power. Personally, I would have loved to have seen if Sukuna had any teachings or any scrolls or books or anything when he was a sorcerer and how did he become so strong? How did he manage to create a domain expansion without a barrier? How did he learn how to do this? How did he become a cursed spirit and therefore eventually becoming the king of all curses? How did this unbeatable monster in the strongest era of Jujutsu in the Heian period, how did he get defeated in the first place? Sukuna himself has so much backstory that I feel we need a spin-off just dedicated to Sukuna himself and I believe we will get that. Jujutsu Kaisen earns way too much money for there not to be further content adding to the lore and history. And this is another thing I really wanted to know more about, the lore and the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. Like you know how in Demon Slayer we have Muzan, who is the first demon and is the creator of all the demons. Who was the first ever cursed spirit and who was the first ever Jujutsu sorcerer? How did all of this get established? I know all of this will take a long explanation, but I still want to know, I mean, okay, you can say that the cursed spirits have always existed since the beginning of time because of the fact that negative human emotions create cursed spirits. I understand that, but 
Where did the concept of jujitsu sorcery come from? Did the humans just had enough of being terrorized by the cursed spirits and then they decided to create jujitsu sorcery to combat the cursed spirits? I mean, we know that is what happened, but can you actually show us that this has happened? The Heian era was considered the golden age of jujitsu sorcery. Where's the flashback? And how was it the golden age of jujitsu sorcery? The big jujitsu families, were they at their peak at this time? Was this the period when they had the strongest ever sorcerers of their family life? And what about Sukhna's family? I can't assume that he just came out of nowhere in some random family and became the strongest sorcerer in the world. He must have come from a prestigious family and I know you can make the argument that Yuji came out of nowhere. But the thing is, Yuji and Sukuna were always related and Yuji always had Kenjaku as his mom, as messed up as that sounds. Plus, Sukuna was also inside of Yuji's body so that in itself will give him a power boost. But with Sukuna, we have no idea so that's why I'm saying we should have had at least a Sukuna flashback. Sukuna is the most important question for me so that's why I feel disappointed that we haven't seen enough from him but I feel this can be resolved easily with a spin-off or the series ending in a cliffhanger. I don't know about you guys but can you actually see the story ending and we have no further Jujutsu Kaisen content. Look at Dragon Ball, there's endless content with that. Look at the amount of spin-offs Shaman King has had over the years. Naruto and Boruto, another example, so there's no way Jujutsu Kaisen ends without anything else coming out of the series. Even Fairy Tail has the 100 year quest, so I can see the same with Jujutsu Kaisen. For me personally, I think the series should end in a cliffhanger. Now that we have a few chapters left, I want to see two things. The Sukuna spin-off either explaining the history of Sukuna or a legit continuation of the story where we actually learn about the world of Jujutsu Kaisen. I don't want to be negative about the story but there's a few things I feel us fans should deserve to learn more about when it comes to the history of this world. Anyway guys, let's have an open discussion with this. What's your honest feelings with Jujutsu Kaisen ending so soon? Do you think Gege is right to end the story in a few chapters or do you think we need more time to learn more about the world? And do you guys think we'll get spin-offs after the series ends? Let me know in the comments down below and of course, don't forget to subscribe to the Shaman Tribe.